I have a real inspiring story. You do. That a lot of people, you know, may like to need to hear, like to hear, you know. So. Cool. Where did you grow up? Where are you from originally? L.A. What was your family like? You said... What was your family like? My family? I was in foster care since I was two years old. Oh, really? Yeah, I bounced around in foster care. I got adopted at 11 by a um, foster parent, but um, situations happened where I just ended up leaving her, too. What was going on with your biological parents? Um, I honestly don't know. I was taken away when I was two years old. Um, I was told plenty of different stories, but I'm not sure exactly what, so. How would you describe your childhood in general? Oh, pretty long. <laughs> I had a long life, with, like the whole 23 years of my life I've been here, I went through something traumatic probably at least every year. Really? Yeah. For example? Um, foster care, you know, bouncing around. Um, one of the busy, biggest thing is being molested multiple times by family members. Mm. And um, foster system is really screwed up, isn't it? Yeah, it, they don't really, you know, check on the kids and stuff like that, like how they're supposed to. And then um, when I finally got away from the people who were molesting me, um, at nine years old, I came to Long. I went to Long Beach, California, and um, that's where I was adopted at. But um, even her dude that she were that she was with, he tried to touch me, and that's when I tried to leave there. And I reached out to the foster care system to, you know, get them to help me out and stuff like that. They told me I checked out too early that they couldn't help me, and I even explained that, you know, I was being mistreated and um, was about to be touched, um, and they still said they couldn't help me. So yeah, the system is bad. <laughs> Foster care. How far are you in school? Um, I actually, I'm not. You know, I'm sadly I only have 14 credits left. I have 14 credits left in high school, before I just basically dropped out because of the life that I had to live after that. Hmm. But when did you start working as a prostitute? 18. 18 years old. Respectable age. You said respectable it's, age? It's a respectable, it's not 13 or 14 like some of the girls. Yeah, I heard a lot of stories, you know, 13, 14 year old girls. A lot of times they, you know, it comes from either what I've been through, being touched. So it made them being curious and then, you know, was misled because of, you know, I, one thing that I can say though, when I started prostituting, I, I started off as a renegade. Like, you know, I didn't start off with a pimp. I really only have one real pimp since I've been doing this since 18 to now. And one thing that I can say though, I'm very observant and guys can be really, really persuasive, especially when it comes to being in this game because it's hard to kind of be in this game without a, a pimp or a protection or, you know, a guy there. But also besides that, just of the game, just girls, how they feel being out here, you know, especially going through things that I went through, you know, being molested and touched young makes you like, feel like you need a guy to fill a hole. And so that's when it is very easy to get persuaded as a woman, especially that young. To, to an outsider watching these videos, perhaps you hear these, <clears throat> you hear these stories about girls like yourself who are with pimps and you're like, oh, why, why would you do that? Keep the money for yourself. But I've seen girls who- Honestly, I wouldn't, I never had to say that it was like, I, I never been the type of person to say that there's a certain way that females should do this. Like I said, I started off as a renegade, but that was because of what I've been through. You know, like I said, I already been touched on and took advantage of as a kid. So I always vowed to myself before that I thought I was even going to be homeless, I vowed to myself that I would never let nobody take advantage of me. So when I became homeless and I had to do what I had to do to put a roof over my head, food in my stomach and, you know, take care of myself, I did it with myself. One, I didn't even have a guy available at the time to even put that in my head. But at the same time though, too, it was just like, that just wasn't my, like, my thought process of it. Like, I just always like, okay, if I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do it for myself. But at the same time, I don't um, talk down or look down on the girls that 
do have those or started out with those because like I said, once again, it's, it's easy to feel persuaded and get persuaded into that situation, especially when you go into it young and, you know, going into it young, that means you had no home, you know, stuff like that. But besides that, though, too, it's, it's easy to want a man because of the things that can go on out here being robbed. You know, I've been held at gunpoint multiple times. Guys thought they were going to take my money or they thought they were going to touch me because they had a gun to my head and you know just the type of person that i am though I, you're not going to do that to me but like it, i but said can, but can a pimp really save the day in that situation because that's like that's that's a matter of seconds when th that goes and, back. and that's what a lot of people don't understand there it can be certain situations where a pimp could save the day you know but it is a lot of situations where that split second yeah she won't even be able to get in contact with her pimp to be able to get him to know that something is going on. What I was about to say earlier is I've seen girls whose pimps get arrested and get put in jail. Yeah. And <clears throat> I'm I'm surprised at how they just don't, they lack the survival skills. It's, I don't know if they get lonely. I had one fall asleep while I was getting choked out in a room before. Well, he wasn't my pimp. It was just a, a guy that I was dating or whatever. And um, I was working at the Cheesecake Factory. The COVID started, so the job got shut down. And so that's when I had to go back to doing this or whatever. And I was already dealing with the guy. But when I first started dealing with I was already, I was I had a regular job, so I wasn't doing this. He didn't even know that I could do that. Like I could be on that type of program, you know, or whatever. But um, when the opportunity presented itself for him, you know, basically I built him to be a pimp, you know. he And one day I'm... I, you know, working or whatever, and he's supposed to be watching, being my uh, protection. And um, I get go on a date with a guy, Mexican, one hand, and um, we go inside a room and we do everything. And then the guy, you know, basically didn't get to finish. And as soon as I'm finna walk out the door, the guy chokes me from behind, and me and him is tussling. I'm trying to fight to get out of the chokehold and when I got out you know he started grabbing me again just tussling for at least like 13 20 minutes 15 20 minutes I only say that to say that I told the guy that I was with oh I'm finna come downstairs me not coming downstairs within five minutes you should have been knocking on that door like what's going on he didn't come upstairs I'm fighting with this guy 15 20 minutes I finally get loose myself I didn't think to oh look for the hit the car, our car that we're in, I'm thinking to run for my safety. So that's just right there, a perfect example, split second where even if they are out there with you, sometimes the safety doesn't matter. Yeah, but what I was saying is I've seen girls whose pimps get put away, put away and you would think they use that as an opportunity to make money on their own, but they don't. They run to another pimp immediately. Once again, that's just they the... They need to. That, that just depends on the... Mind frame of the girl, That's though, what I'm too. Because, like I said, like, it's just, some females really feel like they need, need a guy. Yeah. I think they get lonely out there and they feel like they need the protection. Yeah. Tell me about your clients. You said the what? Your clients, your customers. Uh, I don't know. All different kinds. <laughs> it's all different types out here, you know, running to all different kinds nice, mean, rough. All types. What, what has it taught you about men? Huh? What is what is this work taught you about men? You said what? What have you learned about men? Um. By doing this work. Shit, they'll give you as much as they want as long as they can get what they want. <laughs> if they don't get finished, they'll for sure try to give you more. But seriously, one thing that I learned about men from a pimp perspective that a lot of these guys out here, they're just out here just to make themselves feel better. A lot of them don't even know what a real pimp is, you know, to like even Especially release. here in LA. Yeah, like really even call yourself that or, you know, but everybody is following, you know, the trend and stuff like that. So, you know, they're going to do what they do, but men will know how to talk their way into a lot of situations, whether if it's a pimp or a trick, you know, because there's some tricks out here that They've been out here spending money for with females for so long that they know how to talk a female that don't know 
they know how to talk about it, some things, you know, or get it a lower price or whatever. So a man, they, they know how to use their mouth. Very, very good. That's one thing I learned for sure. What's more important to you, love or money? Honestly, to be honest, love. Love and I just want to, honestly, I really don't want to do this. Like, you know, I mean, money, yes, is good just because, you know, you can't do anything without money. This world revolves around money. You know, but at the end of the day, I just feel like at home is where the heart is. So, how does this impact your life emotionally? Uh, I'm dealing with mental things as of right now. You know, just because of everything that I've been through and still going through. You know, so I'm dealing with my mental as of right now. But I'm a very strong person. You know, I've been through a lot of things. I got tatted on my spine. God gave His toughest by the sword, strongest soldiers, and I really believe that. So. I just keep going. Did you have dreams of doing something else with your life when you were younger? Oh. Or, or now? When I was younger, I used to want to be a judge. Really? <laughs> yes. But as of now, though, like, I really just want to get settled, you know, get stability. And I want to open my own hair business. I'm, I do cosmetology. I want to go to school for cosmetology and just open up my own beauty salon and stuff like that. So. Are you saving money now? As of right now, I'm working on it. You know, it's kind of hard to when you stay in a hotel room. So that's what I'm working on, just getting into a better living situation so that way I can really save money. How do you, I'm do you have kids? Want to. I don't. I had a miscarriage, lost a kid, so, but I don't have actually living kids, no. Keep it that way if you want to. I save try money. to as long as I can. I do want a kid, but I want to be stable. You know, like I said, I've been through foster care. I always tell myself, I don't want my kids to go through anything I've been through. Right. Do you think you get desensitized to how, how dangerous and crazy this lifestyle is? You said. Do you think you get desensitized to how dangerous and crazy this lifestyle is? Oh, well, what do you mean by you, you desensitized? You know, after, after a Like, while. because I, I have people even say, like, the way I react to certain situations is way different. Like I said, I had guys tried to rob me, you know, at gunpoint. And my reaction, literally looking at him dead in the eyes, like, you're gonna have to kill me if you think you're gonna rape me. Like, you're not you're not gonna rape me or none of that. That's like, pretty desensitized. So, and when I had told that to a girl that has been out here longer than me, and she was like, you said what? And I repeated it again, she said, never. She was like, I don't even think I would have responded that way. You know, so I don't know. I just, I really feel, I look at myself as a rose that grew up out the concrete. I've grown from where roses don't go from. I'm a very sweet, pretty thing, but I've been through a lot of t hardships, so I'm not going to go for a lot of bullshit. And you think you get addicted to this fast money? I wouldn't say addicted because, like I said, I have stopped this before just yeah. to go to a regular job. And like I said, I don't want to do this. Like, you know, I would like to do anything else. But at the same time, I'm not just going to settle, you know, because once again, when I stopped, when I did work at the Cheesecake Factory, you know, a lot of people take a, advantage of being a boss. And when they see that people are sometimes having hard times, you know, they just make it a little bit harder. So, you know, I've never been good at listening to people like mm -hmm. So I had no nobody to listen to. So what's the hardest part of this life, this job for you? Actually doing the dates, doing doing what I got to do for the money. You have regulars? Not no more. I used to because I stopped for a while, so I lost all of them. Broke phones, so don't got the same phone no more. Right. Just there's plenty of new new guys out there. I mean, yeah, but I don't want to keep meeting new guys. I just want to get myself together and get out. What do you think the most misunderstood thing is about girls that do this kind of work? That we are really the strongest women there are. Like, we have to really have tough skin to work out here, you know? Rather if it's just because how it looks like we're treating ourselves as low women because we are doing these things to get money, but they have to understand that, once again, sometimes these are only the cards that people are dealt with, you know? and. There is so many hard things that females go through. It's been females that's been killed out there, robbed out there, you know. It's a lot of females that's taken advantage of, mistreated. So we are really like a, a 
the strongest woman they are. Like, real tough skin. To even go through something and still get out there the next day and be like, you know what, because I gotta do this, I gotta, I gotta do what I gotta do. If you had your life to live all over again, what would you have done differently? Honestly, I wouldn't have done anything differently because I feel like the life that I lived, it's meant to be. Like, uh, it made me the person that I am and how strong I'm supposed to be. There's learn- been times where I wanted to take myself out, but it, I didn't succeed it. And that's how I knew that the, my purpose on this earth was not, it hasn't been made yet, so. Yeah. And you're learning from your mistakes. Yeah. Some of them, some of the things that I went through wasn't even my fault, you know? Not blaming on anything else, but you know, it wasn't in my control. That's the be- that's a, a better way to say it. It wasn't in my control. I couldn't control it because I was a kid. But now that I'm getting older, you know, I'm learning how to take control of my life. You been in love before? Have I been in love? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tell me you wasn't a pimp. No. That's good. Do you have friends? Somewhat, yeah. You know, associates. <laughs> associates are not pimps. I mean, are, are not friends. Associates, friends, you know, I mean, because people say they fuck with you and then, you know, but when the hard times really come, like all the, most of the things that I've been through in my life, all the hard times that I've been through in my life, I've been through by myself. So who can I really say is a friend? What advice would you give to a young lady who's thinking of doing this kind of thing? Woo, really, if you can do anything else, don't do it, you know? Like, but if you, these are cards you dealt with, just play it smart, really stack your money, you know? And every day that you do see that it's going, make sure you just stay down until it's just don't go no more because these slow days, they're not worth it. And spend the, just blowing the money, you're not going to get nowhere. You're just going to keep on going in circles and really being out here. Even if you have the mentality of, oh, you don't want to do this forever, it's easy to fall back down into it because of the simple fact that you're just not saving your money. Simply just being smart about it. And drugs? You said what? Drugs. Do I do drugs? Yeah. I've done drugs, but, you know, I... I left it alone. I used to do ecstasy pills, but I don't know, know no more. I drink though alcohol and smoke weed and smoke my popcorn. Do you have to be high or drunk or something like that to do this kind of work? Um, I wouldn't say I would have to be, but it does make it easier because it's um, it's easier for you not to like get into a bad uh, mood, mind frame, or anything, you know. It's got to be tough seeing all these strangers in a night in the way you do it. Uh, yeah, especially the things that I've been through. That's why I said if I can do anything else, I would. But, you know. What's your biggest fear? I don't fear anything but God. I don't even fear death. Like, if it's my time to go, it's my time to go. <laughs> I've been through so much where it's like, what is there left to fear? I've been through a lot that... A lot of people just fear that of happening, so the only thing that's worse than this is death, and I don't fear that. So I don't fear anything. Is it it a self-worth issue that that got you into this and keeps you into it? What do you mean by self-worth? I mean, like, most women would probably say they deserve a better life than to be out in the street selling their ass. I mean, of course, a lot of females feel like they deserve better, you know? But still, I had a lot of people tell me, even me, with me being out here, just by the way that I carry myself, you can tell that I know that I'm worth, I know I'm worth more because I don't let this game make me, as in like with being naked. It's been times where I didn't walk outside like this at nighttime. You know, it was, when I first started, I wasn't even wearing heels, but I was still getting customers and they would tell me like, you know, I like how you still, dress classy, you know, or cover up. You don't got to be naked. Like, you're not following everybody else, you know? You're making sure you still have some class to yourself. Then the day, carrying yourself as a lady, so. Do you think prostitution should be legalized? Isn't it? 
<laughs> <laughs> but honestly, I just feel like, I mean, it's our body. Like, you know, some females are not forced into this. That's the things that they should be cracking down on, the people that are forced into it, the, th the people that are doing sex trafficking. Because, yeah, okay, even they saying they're trying to get these pimps. It's people that's in the government that's doing sex trafficking. That's the things that they should be cracking down on. If a female is out there and she's walking and she's doing it day to day, obviously she kind of has like her own mind frame or she wants to do it too type thing. So a female should, just like abortions, if a female want to get rid of a baby, she should be able to do that. Not everybody is filled with a golden spoon in their mouth, you know? Every time, like, I didn't got arrested, they, oh, you got a pimp? No, I don't have a pimp. I put myself out here because my living situation, I was homeless. I'd rather do this than living on the street, though, because I went two nights of sleeping on the streets and on the train before I started doing this at 18 years old, and it didn't feel good. I don't have nobody else to turn to, though, so I turned to this. So it's, it should be up to the female itself. Just like how everybody else have a decision that, oh, they want to go do this for their life or they want to, because it's like, who are they hurting? They're not hurting nobody. You're not killing, robbing nobody, you know? I mean, some females do, but some niggas rob too, like, you know, some tricks rob females too, so. But as in like, just our mindset, our, um, what should I say, like the, the um like our what our plans is not to uh, go out there and hurt nobody it's just trying to make some money to live trying to make our life different from what it is what would you say is the most important thing you've learned in your 23 years uh the, my whole life shit honestly just really saving is really one of the most important things like saving save, your save money, money save money like, yeah, very few, money. very few of the girls that I've interviewed, huh? Very few of the girls I've interviewed know how to save money. Uh, yeah, I mean, and, and like I said, just too good. Depends on the lifestyle, though. Like, you know, once again, you too, like you said, you asked me if I do drugs. A lot of girls out here, they do gotta do drugs to be out here, you know. So that's another habit, though, of spending money, just like as if paying rent for a room every day, you know, paying rent for a room. You you spend three three thousand dollars inside a room every month, $100 a day. And that's just, a, if it's just $100, what if it's more? Which a lot of rooms did go up. Mm -hmm. So you're spending more money inside that room, you're giving that room money for an apartment. So that's what makes it, it does make it hard to save on top of you still gotta feed yourself. What if the girls do got kids? Feel me, you still got other responsibilities to take up. So it makes it hard to save money, but at the same time though, it just all depends on how the girl moved though, you know? All right. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you. I wish you lots of luck out there. Man, I wish uh, like any other girl the best of luck too. All right, thank you. <laughs>